if you want to get these protein at breakfast. All right, so a new study just got dropped, a scoping review of protein at breakfast and whether or not it makes a difference on muscle mass or strength. This is a very interesting research topic to me because part of my PhD thesis was looking at protein distribution. And let me just give you a brief background for those of you who aren't familiar with why this might be important. When it comes to protein metabolism, we know that uh, a bolus of protein at a meal, anywhere from 20 to 40 grams, depending on the source, will maximize a muscle protein synthesis response. But we also know that that response doesn't keep running just if you keep pumping more protein in. It's about three hours long, and then it's a very defined period of time, and it stops. And putting more protein in above what maxes it out is not going to raise the amplitude either. So you're basically getting this, once you hit a certain level, that area under the curve is going to be the same. And you have no way to store protein. So with carbohydrate, we can store excess carbohydrate as glycogen. We can do de novo lipogenesis, convert it to fat. We do have a little bit of storage capacity for carbohydrate. For fats, we have kind of unlimited storage capacity because you just shove them into adipose tissue. But for protein, you don't really have a way to store protein. And some people have argued with me and said, well, muscle's like storage for protein. Not really. That's like saying you build a house and it's a storage for wood. Like, yeah, you can get wood out of it, but that's not why it exists. So protein distribution was an interesting topic to me during my PhD, because if we know you cannot store protein, and we know that muscle protein synthesis caps out at a meal and also runs a defined period of time, then it would seem to make sense that if you wanted to maximize muscle mass, multiple stimulations of muscle protein synthesis per day would be superior to one or two. And the way most Americans eat protein, uh, there's data from the Castro that demonstrated that most Americans get over 65% of their protein at dinner. So protein intake is very heavily weighted towards dinner. What if the other couple of meals per day aren't really reaching that threshold for protein intake? And so I designed an experiment in rats where we fed same total protein, same source of protein. Protein was completely equal. Calories were equal between groups. I weighed out every single meal for these animals. And we were comparing either an even distribution of protein, it wasn't completely even, but it was close, and it was three meals of protein that we knew would maximize muscle protein synthesis versus a group that was getting 70% of the protein at dinner and then 15% at breakfast, 15% at lunch. So low protein breakfast and lunch, really high protein at dinner, but same total protein throughout the day. And at the end of 11 weeks, we found that the animals that were consuming the evenly distributed diet had bigger, basically, muscle weights in their hind limbs compared to animals that were consuming an uneven distribution. And we were able to show that this was associated with the differences in muscle protein synthesis at breakfast. The results were actually less sexy than I thought they'd be. We were looking at like 5 to 10% differences in muscle weights. And while it might sound impressive over the course of 11 weeks, you have to remember that rats only live about two years. So 11 weeks is a really big chunk of their life. That's like a ninth of their life. And we were controlling literally every single variable in their nutrition, okay? Their, their, their diets were exactly the same. Just the only thing that changes is how we distributed them. And I measured these diets down to the 10th of a gram. It would probably take a very long time to see differences in humans. And so there have been some human studies looking at protein distribution. Some of them show it doesn't make a difference at all. Some of them show that it makes a small difference. And that's not surprising to me. Total protein intake is absolutely the most important thing. But I think distribution may still make a difference, especially at breakfast. I think breakfast may be a special case. Because if you consider most people eat their last meal at night, and then they don't go right to bed after they eat it. They wait an hour or two hours or, or whatever it is, and they fall asleep, and then they're not eating right when they get up. I mean, most people are probably fasting for 12 hours just naturally. Maybe a little bit shorter, but still. Most people don't have high-protein breakfast. Breakfast is, you know, cereal, oatmeal, some people don't eat breakfast at all, a bagel or, or whatnot. So not a lot of people are getting up and like cooking eggs or slamming a protein shake or, or getting in a lot of high quality protein early in the morning. And so that fast gets extended. And so we know that fasting reduces muscle protein synthesis. That is, that's very, very clear. Sorry, uh, intermittent fasters. Fasting is not anabolic. I'm, I'm, I know this hurts to hear. And so the studies that have focused on like protein at breakfast, not just protein distribution, but specifically making sure that one group gets a high protein meal at breakfast versus another group that doesn't, even if they're eating same total protein throughout the day, there are some studies showing better muscle mass outcomes with the group getting the protein at breakfast. 
And so this new scoping review was looking at studies that examined eating at breakfast, eating protein at breakfast with muscle mass and strength outcomes. Now, a scoping review is not a meta-analysis, but basically it's, it's more of like a broad picture than a meta-analysis. And basically the scoping review found that protein at breakfast is probably important for muscle mass and that it may be important for muscle strength, but that data appears to be a bit less clear. Now, I want to be completely honest about my take here. I think protein distribution for the vast majority of people isn't going to make a big difference. I think if you eat protein at breakfast versus not eating protein at breakfast, you're better off eating protein at breakfast for the reasons we discussed. But is it going to be a massive difference in muscle mass? No, it's not. Protein in general is not going to make a massive difference in muscle mass. I used to think that protein was incredibly important for building muscle. And look, my goal, I want to be like the most muscular, strongest human being I can be. A 5% difference for me or a 1% difference for me is a big freaking deal because when I'm competing in powerlifting, a 1% difference is the difference between me winning and not even getting a medal. I care about that 1%. But if you just want to build some muscle and look good, do you need to always have protein at breakfast? Is it going to ruin your gains? Is intermittent fasting going to cause you to not be able to build muscle? That's not what I'm saying. You can absolutely build muscle on levels of protein that are close to the RDA. 65 grams a day, you can build some muscle on that. You can build some muscle not having protein at breakfast. But if you want to max out what you're doing, then protein at breakfast is probably important. And so that's what I wanted to highlight here. Yes, you can skip breakfast and still build muscle, but if you want to max out what you're doing, protein at breakfast is helpful. Now, a lot of people have trouble getting in protein at breakfast. Some people aren't hungry when they wake up. High protein breakfasts are typically time intensive to prepare. Like, you know, eggs and bacon take a lot longer to prepare than just pouring some cereal in a bowl. And so things like protein shakes can be helpful. Now, conflict of interest. I sell a whey protein isolate through my company, Outwork Nutrition, and that is typically what I have in the morning for breakfast. In fact, what I'll do is I'll get up, I'll put it in water, or I'll put it in some milk, or I'll put it in some almond milk, or, or whatever, mix it up, and then if I'm training that morning and I want some carbohydrate, I'll have like some cereal, and I'll use that as the milk for my cereal, right? Otherwise, I'll just slam a shake. And it's not because it's better than real food, but it's because... Like today, filming, I got up and I had 20 minutes to get ready to film. I don't have time to cook eggs. If I've got the time, I love to do it, but I didn't have the time this morning, so I slam a shake. So that's where things like whey protein shakes or protein shakes in general can be really helpful. They're convenient. They don't require a lot of time. Most of them taste pretty good. And in terms of cost per gram of protein, they're very economical. Now, some people say, well, protein powders are expensive. Yeah, but now when you look at how much, what you're getting per gram of protein compared to other food sources. If you guys are interested in my whey protein isolate, you can check it out at the link in the description. And I will catch you guys next week.